If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. For part A, what we're going to do is actually leave particle B where it originally was started. Even though it can rotate around a circular path, we're just going to leave it where it is. Now that would correspond to an angle of zero degrees. And if we look at the graph at zero degrees, the net force acting on particle A is also zero which we can write off on the side as follows. Now we don't really know the charges of any of the particles, but for a moment, let's just assume that particle A has a positive charge. And let's make the same assumption for particle B. We'll call it positive. Now in that case, particle B would be pushing particle A to the left. And maybe we could label that force as FB. Now we know the net force is supposed to be zero. That must mean there's another force that's counteracting FB that would be pointing to the right. And of course, that's the force that charge C is exerting on particle A. Well, in order to have a force pointing to the right, particle C would have to be negatively charged because that would create the attractive force necessary to pull particle A to the right and balance out the force that's exerted on the left. We can see that if charge C is negative and charge B is positive, their ratio will turn out to be a negative quantity. So whatever the answer to part A is, we know it has to be negative because of the story that we just told. Now, again, the net force is zero, so we can set the magnitude of FB equal to the magnitude of FC. And then what we'll do is replace each force with its Coulomb's law expression. Remember, we're calculating the force that each charge is exerting on particle A, so the charge of particle A has to be included in both setups. So for example, Coulomb's law tells us to multiply a constant times the charge of B and then also the charge of A divided by the distance between charge B and A squared. The distance between charge B and A is shown to be D. So we've just written D squared. Notice that the distance from charge C to charge A is actually 2D. So when we plug into the formula on the right side, we have to make sure we call that distance 2D. And then in fact, when we square it, it ends up being 4D squared. The numerator will just have K times charge C times charge A. You'll notice that algebraically we can eliminate the K as well as QA, and then also the D squared can be dropped. So we can simplify this equation. And then if we multiply both sides by four and divide by QB, we get the ratio equaling four. Remember, based on the story we told earlier, this ratio has to turn out to be negative. So it's very important that you call the ratio negative four and not positive four. And this is the correct answer to part A. Now on to part B. We're going to go ahead and assume again that charge A is positive, and then we're going to figure out what the signs on these two would be. If we keep charge B where it's located, once again the angle would be zero degrees, and we can see from the graph that the net force would be 1.25 times this value F naught. It's important to note that at zero degrees we have the maximum force acting on charge A. The fact that it's a maximum implies that the force that charge B is exerting must be pointed in the same direction as the force that charge C is exerting. Again, because it's a maximum force, and in order to have a maximum force, your two force vectors have to be pointing in the same direction. So we can take the net force and set that equal to FB plus FC, and then we're going to fill in the respective Coulomb's law expressions just like we did before. So here are those expressions. Note that since the forces are pointing to the right, they must be attractive forces. In other words, charge B is attracting charge A towards it, and so is charge C. That means their signs must both be negative. Now, what we'll do next is we'll take charge B and we're going to move it 180 degrees along that hypothetical circle and situate it right down here. Okay, so just notice once again, we've moved charge B by 180 degrees from its original spot. The distance from charge B to charge A is still denoted as D. Since we're at 180 degrees, we look at this point on the graph and we see that we have a minimum force. Now a minimum force suggests that one of the forces is pointing in one direction and the other force is pointing in the opposite direction. And that is consistent with our selected sign conventions. We can see that charge B would be pulling charge A to the left through that attractive force and then charge C would be pulling charge A to the right, again through an attractive force. The net force at this point is 0.75 F0. And that's going to equal the force that charge B is exerting, which is negative because it's pointing to the left, 
added to the force that charge C is exerting. Notice the distances haven't changed. Again, the distance from B to A is still D. The distance from C to A is still 2D. So when we fill in the Coulomb's law expressions, they're going to basically look the same, except we now have a negative sign on FB. Now, what we'll do is actually add these two equations together. So when we add the left side, we're going to end up with 2 f naught. Notice that this term and this term cancel out because one's positive and the other is negative. And then we're going to have two of those terms since we're adding them together and they are like terms. Now, what we're going to do is solve this equation for QC. So to do that, we can actually cancel two on both sides of the equation, multiply both sides by 4D squared, and then divide by KQA. And this is a result that we're going to hold on to and just set aside for a moment. Now, let's return to these two equations. Let's do a little algebraic trick. Let's actually multiply both sides of the bottom equation by negative one. So basically, we're gonna change the sign of each term. And then we're once again going to add the two equations together. And as before, we're going to rearrange this equation, but this time solve for QB rather than QC. We did a little rearranging there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Notice that 0.5 divided by two can be written as 0.25. So now that we have an expression for both QB and QC, we're simply going to divide them to get the ratio. So let's take a look at that. So we're basically stacking the equations on top of each other. We're gonna divide both sides of these equations. So we divide QC by QB, we get the ratio that we're looking for. And then dividing the right side's a little bit more complicated, but you can see that the D squareds are going to cancel out as will the F naughts. The KQAs will also cancel, and then you're left with four divided by 0.25, which of course is 16. Remember, we had said that charge B was negative as was charge C. So we're dividing a negative by a negative charge, which turns out to be positive. So we can keep the ratio at positive 16, and this is indeed the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to answer.